I do believe in a higher power that sustains and directs all of life. I'd really like to know how to tell where I'm going. I get life is a mystery, but it really feels like I should at least know that. I don't have a clue about all this woo-woo. I take life as it comes, living day by day. Evolution this, evolution that. What is it supposed to mean? Evolution from what to what? Okay, so I get the nodes, but with my chart, how am I supposed to make the leap? This is either a crazy joke, some cosmic joke, or there's really a big secret to working it all out. If the purpose of life is evolution, how do we know where we are on our evolutionary path? That can be answered in infinite ways because there are infinite paths. Whether we're talking about the outer planets in Western astrology which mark the generational collective consciousness we are here to evolve through and contribute to are the sidereal 120 year Mahadasha that marks the influences and duration of each planet at specific times in our birth chart. Today we're going to talk about the basic and universal evolutionary path. Great Mother Father God's nodal dance along the path of the ecliptic. Every 18 months the type of dance they do changes how the collective planetary soul progresses through the cosmic layers of our unique evolution. We experience this as an oppositional yin-yang ego-soul energy pulling us along with them. On an ego level, it feels like pulling because as soon as we get used to Virgo North Node Pisces South Node, we are thrust into the energy of Leo North Node Aquarius South Node. However, simultaneously, during that transit, the soul was traversing the path the ego was preparing to enter in Leo Aquarius. And with a quick step ball change into Cancer Capricorn, the soul or sidereal astrology supports and prepares us for yet another opportunity to learn the dance of ego-soul alignment. What is this present evolutionary opportunity began in May 2017 in Cancer Leo Rahu North Node opposing K2 South Node energies in Capricorn Aquarius? In this full moon video, you will see how this total lunar eclipse mega full moon release cleanse and purification follows up on the shadow issues that emerged in your moon sign during the total solar eclipse August 21st. It is the most personal lunar eclipse reading you will receive without a personal reading which looks at your unique natal chart, nodes, and the lunar energies that govern important aspects of your evolution. How have you intuitively and emotionally approached this eclipse season thus far? For instance, immediately after the total solar eclipse, Great Mother told me to begin this channel. Although I didn't feel that I was ready, intuitively, I knew it was now or never. I had no idea how to incorporate such a commitment into my busy life coaching schedule. However, not only have the reading saved me countless hours corresponding with clients between sessions, I now realize this current nodal axis is my coaching specialty, mama and daddy drama trauma. And this dance is an invitation to us all to heal it. Mama drama trauma and daddy drama trauma are planetary disorders. It is when a parent or both project unhealed aspects of themselves onto the child or children, causing emotional and or physical trauma. In cases when the parent or parents are unwilling, unable, or unavailable to heal, my coaching work supports individuals to live in loving detachment. 
For more information on that, go to greatmotherspeaks.info. Click the picture of me wearing an afro and the words Mama Drama Trauma on the homepage where you will find where to book life coaching and a personal Great Mother Speaks reading online. The Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck used for these readings was channeled several years ago while praying for a more soulful approach to support my clients. Based on Dorothy's orphan narrative in the Wizard of Oz movie, Great Mother teaches us through the signs and symbols of chakras, the lunar cycles, and our God Goddess identity, how to dance along the yellow brick road we are being guided to walk this lifetime. It is a path that teaches us to honor personal truth and the truth in our healing or ego soul aligning process to lovingly express our highest truth at all times. At this full moon, January 31st, 2018, total lunar eclipse moment, this is what they have to say to you. Well, welcome Libra Scorpio moon sign people to your lunar eclipse reading, your total lunar eclipse. The earth will cast its shadow upon Great Mother Moon and we will be projecting those shadows out for purification by Great Father. This is a very auspicious opportunity for us to dissolve carryover issues from the total solar eclipse Eclipse, the world stopped to watch August 21st of last year. A total solar eclipse is a new moon event. That is that dark moon that cast its shadow over the sun that the world completely stopped to watch, wasn't it? That that moon came right over that sun. And when it does that energetically for us on a soul, emotional, energetic level, it pulls out the shadows for us to look at what's going on in our collective planetary consciousness that needs to be healed. And it gives us a period of time between the solar eclipse to the total lunar eclipse, which is about cleansing. These happen during full moon phases. And so this is a full moon coming up to purify the shadows that came out during that time. And for you, Libra Scorpio moon people, you approached the total solar eclipse with the energy of loving detachment. There was a relationship or a situation in your life in which the angels were assisting you to live in loving detachment. That sun was so powerful, wasn't it? in Leo Leo in both the sidereal and in the Western ruled by the sun, the power of a hundred suns. And this power is so momentous that it is ruled by the nakshatra of Maha. Now Leo was traveling through this nakshatra, which is actually ruled by K2, I should say of Maha. And it's a very evolved, a very dignified Leo energy. It is not the attention seeking childish Leo energy that was shining upon us. It was the Leo energy of paternalistic family loving care. And with this Leo energy and the Leo energy from the West, which was wanting to have fun, which in fact is in the North Node, which is where our eclipses occur, wanting us to grow in creativity and self-expression, there was a great energetic pull toward enthusiasm on the planet. But Great Mother came through in her new moon energy and she said, oh, that's wonderful. But um, what about this right here? What about um, the plans that need to be made dealing with the shadows beneath this sun energy? 
and the shadows were in the moon. The moon sign was in Cancer Leo. So as we see here with the angels that were supporting you at that time, the yin yang energy, the double yin and the double yang is ego soul alignment. We have the sun, great father energy and powerful Leo and the moon in Cancer Leo, sidereal Western astrology. The Western astrology, we had the sun in Leo and the moon in Leo. So there was a push pull in that north nodal energy really wanting to balance itself on the one hand shine its light but on another shed light on the shadows that's what a total lunar eclipse does and on a soul level the cancer was in the nakshatra ashlesha I go very deeply into these transits, into their vibrational and frequency meanings in the video Lunar Totality that is uh, beneath all of these um, reports for each collective celestial conscious um, sign, you know, that, that we're talking about. And so look at that video, get the details, get the clarity that you need, but to know what was going on with that new moon crossing over the sun is very important because that cancer in that nakshatra was a very turbulent cancer energy. It was a very emotionally chaotic energy, very deep pathologies, a lot of issues with mama drama trauma, which is my area of coaching specialization. It had a lot of uh, resistance to growth, resistance to expansion, very self-limiting, wanting what it wanted, what it wanted, very imbalanced. While the angels were supporting Libra Scorpio energies to be balanced. And so there was a great energetic vibe going on with you that was very empowering. It was a very powerful opportunity for you to see shadows because you were open to it. You were either open to it because your heart had been broken, which is a form of heart opening, or you were open to it voluntarily because that Leo Leo son for you, Libra Scorpio people was in your 11th house with the Libra in the sidereal and in your 10th house in the Western. So in the 11th house, this Leo energy on a soul level was being expressed as a genuine concern, a dignified paternal concern for others. It was a sun that was shining a light that was very, um, very uh, Christ-like. In fact, um, the celestial child uh, dancing across the cosmos type of energy, uh, very much embracing its divinity as a child of the great mother, father, God, and wanting to shine its light for others to do so on a soul level. That's where you were Libra Scorpio and intuitively you were we're downloading that emotionally from the 10th house. And so maybe perhaps in your career, you were at the top. You were just beginning something that you love doing, that people love when you do it. Maybe you began doing something like training or working with children, or perhaps you even uh, took over some type of tourist destination activity, or maybe you even were recognizing a whole new area creative project that would take advantage of your highest creative potential in some other way. You were making uh, choices that were in the moment that just really allowed you to freely tap into the light and the darkness whatever shadows were coming forward again, you were able to look at them and say, okay, this is the choice for me. Because the reality of the situation is what we most fear is choice and change. That's why the lunar cycles are so useful for us to work with because it ingrains in us a pattern of accepting change as the natural course of life within us. And you were operating with that energy. You were in a place of accepting on some level your soul contract because 10th house has to do with the wish fulfillment of the soul as it incarnated, as it intended to express itself through your body, that ego soul alignment, that double yin, double yang.
and the angels were assisting you to become more lovingly detached from situations such as mama drama trauma, such as imbalanced cancer energy at home or with a mother or with a mother figure, or even in your new work as a manager dealing with people who were expressing this type of energy, perhaps some addictions, perhaps they uh, were always involved in some type of drama that they just seem to be caught up in all the time. And somehow or another, you were able to approach that very ominous, energetic, total solar eclipse with the assistance of the angels and you took it on and we know that you did libra scorpio moon people because your transformative opportunity for the total lunar eclipse coming up this full moon january 31st is lilith the energy of lilith is dealing with your personal power and your personal power coming from your gut chakra it's telling you to pay attention to your processing, be it your actual physical intestinal processing of your food and what your body is telling you, your body mind. Sometimes we don't pay attention to our bodies until the pain body begins to communicate to us certain illnesses and things. Well, great mother is saying whether that's the case or, or not, pay attention to what your body is saying. Sometimes we have difficulty digesting our emotions. So this has to deal with your personal power. This has to do with the opportunity and the energies available during this total lunar eclipse with the sun and Capricorn Aquarius being that you can now fully accept your birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole. You've already started on that course, Libra Scorpio Moon people, but this is telling you now the energies are supportive and you completely embracing that as a reality in your life. Because as we see here with this card, Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck is based on the 49 scenes of the Wizard of Oz. We see Dorothy here with both Glinda the Good Witch and the Wicked Witch of the East as Glinda gives Dorothy the ruby red slippers and the Wicked Witch wants to take them away. No sooner that they've been placed on her feet. Where is it in your life that there needs to be a release of that type of energy around you? Yes, the angels are supporting you and they have been and will continue to do so every moment of your eternal life. But where is it now in your everyday life that there has been perhaps a mama drama trauma situation in which a mother has projected unhealed aspects of herself onto you or onto others causing emotional and or physical trauma that's affecting you or that you're in a situation where people who've been affected by that are again affecting you perhaps in the workplace with that 10th house energy. But here with the lunar eclipse, this is fourth house energy. So we're talking about your mother. We're talking about someone who's a surrogate mother. We're talking about someone who manages you. We're talking about someone who has that maternity authority over you or that you have maternity authority over because we have both Glenda and the Wicked Witch of the East. And the gut is telling you that something's not right. Your personal power needs to be asserted and we can see that by the waxing gibbous moon. This is the moon phase just before the full moon. So if you're watching this just before the total lunar eclipse, which is a full moon, then this phase comes just before it and it is about revising, refining, editing, developing evaluating how you feel again that gut chakra emotions are processed as well and what the angels are saying with great mother what the angels are supporting you through what great mother is saying is that you need to feel what you feel you know that you're being supported as Glenda supporting Dorothy here giving her the shoes for her journey her birthright to be happy healthy and whole regardless of where her journey takes her but right there the wicked witch who symbolizes the terrible mother wanting to take her birthright away that is what happens with mama drama trauma the abandonment or abuse takes the child's birth right away and it doesn't always happen as a child sometimes it happens as a teenager as we see here sometimes it happens way after we have children and then a whole nother side of the mother comes out because she's still trying to heal her own issues by taking something away from us 
okay? And it's a cycle. One of the first things we determine in my life coaching is whether or not the parents, be it mama drama or daddy drama trauma, are able, willing, or available to heal. Because then we can make it a family thing. That's always our first choice before we engage in practicing loving detachment. Because we do have to detach in order to heal as Dorothy had to leave the farm. She had to face that which was shadowing her light, which was that mama drama trauma energy. And that is the energy of Ashlesha that came out during the total solar eclipse. Now the sun that is in this full moon of the total lunar eclipse is a sun that is in Capricorn Aquarius. It is a sun that is shining a light on issues around security, self-worth, validation, um, your divine nurturance. Where are you being divinely nurtured? How are you recognizing where the support is coming from? Primordial mother energies. It's dealing with trust issues because Capricorn in the sidereal is talking about uh, the nakshatra Shavana, which is someone born under this nakshatra has a love of listening and a love of learning. When um, when uh, this nakshatra is hosting a planet, it is very much in the nature of healing based on this ability to hear, based on this ability to listen. These individuals are good counselors. They're good researchers. They tend to people born under this energy have mother relationship problems. They suffer from mama drama trauma, but they evolve from it. And as a result of their love for listening and learning, they share what they've learned and what are the lessons of mama drama trauma. They are to learn self-love and spiritual independence. Those are the lessons. And we have to have primal trust in the primordial mother in order to embrace our birthright of health, happiness, wholeness, symbolized by the ruby red slippers, to go on that journey to developing that ability to love ourselves. And so this sun that is coming up is very supportive of that on a soul level for you, which is in your fourth house, Capricorn. And the emotional response, the ego response to this type of energy in your fourth house in Aquarius is about looking at where in your life is your need for validation from others taking over your life in such a way that you don't trust yourself. See Dorothy, you know, she looks so scared in this picture. She doesn't know whether or not she's going to be able to hold on to those shoes. She's so scared of that witch. And so the validation from other people that you're worthy for your birthright is not necessary. And you know that there's been six months that has transpired since you were approaching the solar eclipse with this. And so now just like any other season and just like any other phase from that new moon phase, you are now at that full moon position. You are now, you have come from this with the angels and the angels remain with you to the full moon phase which is all about ripeness, illumination, fulfillment. And so it's a fulfillment of the promise made here. When you are opening your heart to this alignment, and so Great Mother's saying is that the opportunity for you is to go ahead and own that personal power. You don't need the validation of anyone, and in particular, your people at home, that fourth house. You don't need to be validated by your mother. You don't need to be validated by your father, even though his father is typically 10th house, but see, you had 10th house here. Okay, with the Leo there, um, you don't need to have your highest potential questioned or validated by anyone. You're already valid, Libra, Scorpio, Moon people. And you've had six months through that cycle to see and to realize just that from that new moon, from that new moon phase until now. Okay. And so 
Looking at that, Great Mother does not want you to overlook the fact that this moon is also in Cancer Leo, but it's in a much more evolved nakshatra called Pusha. Again, look at lunar totality for details about these energies because that's what's supporting you. Great Mother does not want you to overlook that supporting you in gaining and regaining your personal power, accepting your birthright for happiness, health, and wholeness is Jesus, the Christ consciousness, the yin symbol, and here, ruling the heart chakra in this deck is the law of soul guidance and soul guardianship. It is a universal law that we are guarded and we are guided. We are never left alone. Great Mother does not want you to overlook that. This is 10th house energy where the moon is for you. And so again, this is a work-related kind of thing for you, be it an actual formal job in which you have acquired or experienced the things that I've spoken of prior, or that you have created a project or a, 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 a business that you are enjoying that you are beginning to actually express your soul mission in this physical body. Maybe you've been doing it for a long time and that's why you've come to this place of surrender and of living and loving detachment. You've learned to trust the process. Great Mother is acknowledging you for this Libra Scorpio moon people. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Now the shadow work, for this particular lunar eclipse has to do with releasing those shadows, okay? So the solar eclipse shows us what the shadows are and yours were angels living in love and detachment, so okay. <laughs> okay, shadows are usually those things unspoken, so that could be something that's unspoken, right? Um, the shadows tend to be things we don't have a language for that uh, we avoid discussing out of shame. Well, that wouldn't work, and so maybe you haven't really shared that a lot with people. Maybe you've just kind of known within yourself that, yeah, you know, I'm really protected. The angels are really with me on this and this is great. And you've kind of kept it to yourself. But because the transformational opportunity is personal power because you're protected, let's see what Great Mother wants you to look at. And so that's the shadow, what we're looking at to cleanse and purify this lunar eclipse. That's embracing the shadow. Wow, your shadow is embracing the shadow. So Great Mother is saying, go ahead and embrace the fact that you are living in loving detachment, that you are in fact protected and guided by the angels. We all are, but this is an emphatic truth for you that has to do with this ecliptical dance that we're on for 18 months and that we have been on for six months in earnest now. Great Mother is saying that for you, this is about angelic relationships. So when we talk about angelic relationships, and since she's going there about talking about embracing the shadow about that, Inanna is about scaling the depths of the underworld in order to retrieve what we love most. And so she's encouraging you to utilize your angelic support and guidance to really go for what you want in life, for what you love on a soul level. What is that 10th house wish fulfillment that you have for incarnation? This is your third eye. This is your intuition. This is your soul in the crescent moon phase. This has to do with you planting new seed. Great mother is saying that the shadow for you, Libra Scorpio moon people, has to do with the fact that you do know who you are and you do know what your strengths and your weaknesses are. It's not an issue of validation with you. In fact, you are operating with this more mature cancer nature, which is more conservative. It is nurturing, very caregiving. It's an unconditional, dependable love. So much so, the lesson for this moon in cancer, this Pusha nakshatra, is to become more self-protective. And so perhaps in embracing the shadow, Great Mother is saying, acknowledge the angelic support so that you can go even deeper into the mysteries of what the support has for you into what is available for you to plant, for you to cultivate. That crescent moon is all about nurturance and support. There's more for you. Not just what you've seen so far, what you've experienced so far since the total solar eclipse, Libra Scorpio moon people. There's more. There's a lot more for you. 
and it's in your shadow and so it's not really seen and uh, it's been felt it's been intuitively felt but you know how subtle these energies can be and sometimes that can make these readings a little you know um, you know ambivalent for people but you know what I'm talking about you have felt that and it's an energetic frequency that you have sensed and great mothers coming through to confirm is available for you in your shadow your relationship to the shadow is that yeah you're facing the challenge you're facing the challenge this scene is actually in follow-up to this scene sometime after but the sphinx card is a first quarter moon, fifth chakra card. And this has to do with you making a choice to speak your highest truth. And so this would indicate that great mother is saying underneath the angel position we see here, that it is time to share with people what you know about the angelic support. It doesn't mean you go around preaching or that you're even doing readings like I am, unless you want to, unless that's part of your soul wish fulfillment, by all means you must. But if that's not what it means for you, like Dorothy in this card, this scene is when she's in the witch's castle. And remember, she was looking at the crystal ball and she saw Aunt M calling for her. And she was calling back to Aunt M saying, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. But Aunt M couldn't hear her. Well, sometimes that's how it is when we share our spiritual evolution with others. They are in another dimension and they can't quite hear what we're saying, but that's okay. Great Mother saying that that may be something that you're dancing with right now and maybe that's why this is in the shadow that there's more angelic support for you. Maybe that's why you don't see it because other people, again, that validation, which is in your fourth house. And so maybe people very close to you at home aren't hearing you and what you're really saying and maybe you've made hints maybe you haven't forthrightly said well you know everything's good you know just have faith have trust and people aren't hearing you well that's that shall just embrace it anyway because this scene in the movie is when the three return to the castle and Oz is discovered to be not quite the magician that he purported himself to be and Dorothy says to him you are a very bad man and he responds by saying, I'm not a bad man, just a very bad wizard. So you know your strengths and your limitations, Libra Scorpio Moon people. And this is, um, you know, what happens right after, you know, she comes from the witch's castle. And so, you know, you have been facing the challenge of embracing your angelic support and you may have needed a reminder about the law of soul, soul guidance and guardianship you may have needed a reminder about that love because you have been holding it down um, and that's probably why it's in the shadow yeah that's probably why that's in the shadow about planting new faith seeds but she's saying and this um, Sun in Capricorn Aquarius is saying that you know it's not about that it's about your honest expression of your values and your dreams and you being receptive to divine nurturance and primordial um, mother energy that receptivity to your intuition that's what this is about Okay, it's about trusting your soul self, you know, and others secondly, as a cosmic support, you know, like these general celestial collective consciousness readings for your sign. You know, it's just a general energy wave, like a, a radio station or a TV station that you're tuned into, and you're just kind of going with that. You watch that more than the others. And so there's an energy that goes with that, with all other people that tune into that more than others. And there's a whole culture from it. There's a whole attitude. There's a whole behavior. There's a whole whatever, zhuzh about it, as they say. And it's the same thing with this. There's a general collective of consciousness around this Libra, Libra Scorpio moon energy that's saying that in this sun, however, um, there is family dynamics. There are family dynamics that are impeding um, you, but the support therefore through this full moon is that the bright light of the sun is going to purge whatever those shadow issues are at home that prevent you from embracing this guidance and this support 
to embrace your personal power. Now, the shadow work is to realize you are already well. That birthright to happiness, health, and wholeness, that's what wellness is. It's wholeness, your holiness. You already have it. That's your shadow work. This is the, a full moon card, full moon heart chakra card. And heart chakra is the crossroads between the ego and the soul. You're aligned. As soon as you realize, and it's very likely this full moon, you're going to realize that you already have everything that you're seeking. Sula scales the depths of the oceans to get to the very deepest emotional point right there at that crossroads between emotion and intuition. The emotion has probably been to feel abandoned, to feel that you're probably being picked on, that your birthright to happiness, healthness, health and wholeness is being challenged. But you know otherwise. That's what came out of the shadows for you six months ago and the sun is back to confirm you have scaled those depths from the new moon to the full energy and this is the scene when the three go before Oz asking their wishes that's your shadow work Libra Scorpio moon people is to realize that whatever you're asking other people to validate whatever you're thinking has to be condoned by someone else whatever you are handing out your greatest endeavors your greatest ideas out for uh, to be co-signed by someone else you already have it just as when they went before his throne each of them already had what they wished for too they just needed a journey and that's your journey your shadow work is to realize you already have everything you need this is 10th 11th house Leo energy that opened all of this up for you and the moon is in the 10th house so whatever gifts talents abilities that you have to share with the world the world is expecting from you you don't need to keep on asking whether or not it's a good idea or whether or not you should do it and all this kind of stuff you know in your heart and you're being guided oh, this is absolutely wonderful what great mother is saying to embody to facilitate your shadow work is joy the pleasure principle hatar the great mother incarnation in which we all are incarnated gods and goddesses this one hatar the ancient one in the new moon second chakra card symbolized by the ankh is all about the pleasure principle great mother is saying what's going to facilitate your shadow work to embrace your birthright is to just go on and enjoy your life this is the scene in the movie when Dorothy leaves the farm and she and Toto are walking across the bridge from the farm to Professor Marvel's camp. Where are you walking from? This all this fourth house solar energy that is purging and cleansing this volcanic purge of all of these shadow issues around you accepting your divinity, your birthright to be happy, healthy and whole in your family domestic environment. What is it that you are crossing over into? Because that's a bridge. She leaves one side to go on to the other. What's your other side? In this card, Great Mother is asking us, what are you running to? Are you running away from something out of fear? Or are you running toward your bliss, Scorpio moon people? Are you running toward your bliss? That was a question Dorothy had to answer before she could really leave the farm. She came back and was taken up in the twister gene and taken on a journey. And this is the journey that you're being taken on in order to do the shadow work of realizing you were already there. It's one thing to say something. It's another thing to feel it. That's what these moon sign readings are about. Getting in touch with really what it is that we're feeling. And right now, the collective energy say that you are feeling a need for validation from those closest to you. But intuitively on a soul level, Libra moon level, 
You already have everything that you're asking for. Great Mother is saying that to facilitate that belief within yourself where it's sincere and not just talking and not just propagating, not just um, pontificating, make sure that where you're leaving your desires, where you're leaving your request for being validated, it's actually taking you someplace where you're going to enjoy yourself. You're actually embarking on a pleasurable journey as opposed to being angry about feeling rejected or even feeling like, okay, so I'm just supposed to trust these angels. Wow. Thanks a lot. You know, sometimes we can be upset um, because we do suddenly realize we have to take responsibility for the fact that uh, we are guided and we are guarded. Therefore, that means that to continue to behave fearful means that, you know, you're rejecting it and that's on you. And, you know, that can kind of make you mad, you know, because um, you might not feel like taking risk to express your divinity. You might not feel like following your heart or doing the energetic work to strengthen your self-confidence. You might not feel like doing that. And Dorothy certainly wasn't in the mood to be doing all that either. That's why she came right back home. So she thought before Great Mother again took energetic control through the twister. So just be sure, Libra Scorpio Moon people, that as you do your shadow work of embracing your birthright, that you do so with joy, that you do so with pleasure, because that's what the energies are supporting you for. Maya is the outcome of your shadow work. By doing that, you're gonna see beyond all illusion. This is another new moon card. Great Mother is really pointing back to that total solar eclipse, which was a new moon in Leo, Leo Sun and Capricorn Leo Moon, a very immature, uh, I'm sorry, Cancer Leo, very immature Cancer energy. And so she's wanting to remind you that now we're in a more mature Pusha Cancer um, energy on the soul level. And so this is soul because this is third eye, okay? And so she's wanting you to know that the outcome of you taking a moment to hear what she's had to say and energetically work with her message, you are going to see beyond any illusion of you not being valid, of you not being secure, of you not being worthy of having divine nourishment on any and every level that you need. You're going to see beyond the illusion even of your self-worth and you're going to be able to trust yourself in ways that you have not been able to trust yourself before because that purge that's coming up, this total lunar eclipse, is going to wipe away everything in your personal life that is not supporting the wish fulfillment that your soul has. In this scene of The Wizard of Oz, Toto pulls the curtain from the great Oz, showing everyone who he truly is. But we see the third eye, that's the soul eye. You already know within yourself exactly what the truth is in this situation. Someone or some situation very close to you is pretending to be something that they're not. And you've been allowing them to do that because you have gone through a journey through this um, kind of drama through this um, kind of um, interaction with this person um, and through this, the, the, this pretense, you, you've allowed this to, 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 to stay up. Um, but now with you releasing this fear around all of this love and support around you to fully express your purpose for being here in a mature, nurturing self-nurturing way which when it's done in divine order you ultimately nurture others in in loving ways 
You see beyond the illusion that says that you're not a divine child of the great mother, father, God. You see beyond the illusion of condemnation and self-judgment, that guilt and that shame, whatever, um, about whatever just just goes away you are not responsible for other people in the games that they want to play that's not your um, responsibility at all you know what is your responsibility just like Dorothy and the three is that once they saw the truth they had to what acknowledge it the little dog saw it they couldn't play it you know they didn't know that was what he was doing but once they saw it, they embraced the truth. And that's what's going to happen with you is that it's not that it's some ominous thing that's so terrible. In fact, when they discovered that Oz wasn't who he said he was, that allowed everyone to come to a higher degree of their understanding of who they were. Okay. And so go ahead and continue facing the challenge as you have been doing for the uh, prior six months and add to it an understanding that this eclipse is offering you the reclamation of your personal power as you accept the guidance and guardianship that you have from your angels and what great mother has given you here today thank you so much for watching sharing and liking if you would like a personal reading which will give you a lot more detail in relationship to your own north and south nodes your rahu and vedic your noodle your nodal uh relationships and transits to this particular planetary uh transit that's going on with the nodes it will really uh hone in on some of these issues for you and clarify what questions you may have as well as your particular uh moon sign and the house that it's in will make a little bit of difference uh, for you as well for instance your scorpio moon sign might actually be in your eighth house you know of rebirth Birth and regeneration which is very different from the general reading which is done from a first house perspective okay that's all but remember above all and most of all great mother loves you and I do too as always double check your moon sign at the links below because in case it is the same in your sidereal as it is in your Western which happens one-fifth of the time then you will also want to listen to your celestial collective consciousness sign before this